Italy is on lockdown in an unprecedented move. All the country's 60 million residents are being restricted to stop the spread of COVID-19. There's a ban on events, schools are closed, and public, public areas are restricted. It's the toughest response yet to contain the virus as military police are stationed at checkpoints to make sure people follow the rules. At the same time, Chinese President Xi Jinping visited the epicenter of the virus outbreak. He went to Wuhan and met with patients recovering from the coronavirus. All right, let's break down the worldwide numbers now of the coronavirus. There are 114,000 confirmed cases, 64,000 people have recovered, but 4,000 people have died from the virus, which leaves about 46,000 now still with the coronavirus. Joining us now is Dr. Margaret Harris, spokesperson for the World Health Organization. Doctor, good to see you again. I'm curious what you make of, uh, of Xi Jinping's visit to Wuhan, and is it a sign that perhaps the worst is behind us? Good morning, Alexis. And yes, uh, it is a sign that the worst is seems to be behind for China. Be aware they're not out of the woods yet, and they've even seen cases coming from other places into China. So it's not time to take the foot off the accelerator. It's time to take it very, very seriously. But the important thing about China is that it they have shown us that you can stop this thing, that if you really work across the community. If everybody's committed, you can stop this thing. Dr. Harris, uh, help us understand the situation in the U.S. Do you expect or do you think we're, we're looking at a potential spike in, in infections over the next couple of weeks? You certainly have a large number of cases in the U.S. and this virus is very transmissible. It, it, it it infects one person generally infects at least two other people. So if there is a transmission in communities that's unrecognized, you will see a rise in cases. What really happens in the next couple of weeks is really in the hands of everyone, these hands, keeping them clean, not touching a mouth, nose and eyes, but also the hands of the authorities making decisions about not having large gatherings in areas where you've got ongoing transmission and uh, encouraging people to work from home and take all the other measures they can take to avoid being in very crowded places. Doctor, the U.S. we know has struggled to roll out testing nationwide for coronavirus. I think as of Saturday, only 6,000 had been tested. I think the number is closer to 75,000 now. But do you happen to know where things stand in terms of these testing kits? And, and might it start to be uh, put into the hands of, of, uh, of local authorities? Testing is certainly a very, very important part of the armory against a virus like this, because you need to know who's got it. It's uh, the problem with this virus is a lot of people have a mild case, but they transmit it to somebody else who's vulnerable. They have a severe case and they are so ill that they require two to three weeks of intensive care. And if you have a lot of people in that situation, then you have your hospitals overwhelmed. So the secret is certainly knowing who in your community is does have, the, have a case and isolating all the people who've been in contact with that person for the two week incubation period. So yes, Testing is crucial. The specific details of who is doing the testing and who is managing it, that is up to each country. But we provide as much support as possible. We provide testing kits, we provide advice, and we provide expertise. Dr. Harris, uh, last night, Vice President Mike Pence said he has not been tested for coronavirus. And reportedly, the president has not been tested either. What's your advice to them and also a lot of other elected officials that uh, tend to come in contact with large crowds? Well, it, it, the most important thing is, as I mentioned, the absolutely fastidious personal hygiene. So a, a well-washed hand, and that's soap and water, happy birthday twice. I've seen there are a lot of different songs that people sing now when they wash their hands, but being really serious about washing those hands, having a means of washing your hands at all the times, so and carrying a hand sanitizer in your bag, Checking your temperature, if you think that you've, if you have been in contact, daily checking of your temperature gives you an idea of whether or not you're developing a fever, because that's the first sign for most people. 80% of people have a fever as the first sign in this illness. And being careful not to be in contact, so a form of self-isolation, uh, and that's not shaking hands. Keeping that meter apart, it is difficult, but it is something we all must do at this point.
And doctor, just to go back to those test kits, do you believe that you have enough test kits on hand? Is there an issue right now or is there a shortage uh, according to the, to the World Health Organization? So there are different test kits. The, the exciting thing about um, this virus, if you could call it exciting, is that we actually know more about this virus in a much faster time than any new virus that's arrived in the human population in, in history. Uh, we identified the virus within a couple of weeks of it being clear that there was something going on. And identification of the genome of the virus made it possible to develop testing. And the tests are, different tests are developed by different uh, health authorities. It's the same uh, scientific method, but you can do it slightly differently. Uh, we, WHO, have been shipping vast numbers of kits and the necessary reagent to all the countries that have asked for it. And at the moment, we are not concerned about supplies, but I couldn't give you a specific figure on that. All right, Dr. Margaret Harris at the WHO, thank you so much for your time. It's a pleasure. Hey, investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well, then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up-to-the-minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day, wherever you are.